Greetings comrades with all protocols observed. Welcome back to the third episode of Buzz Aldrin Space Program Manager as we continue our race to the moon with the United States. And it's just giving us the information here again about the budget that we have met all of our goals and that we will be getting a substantial increase, which is fantastic. Now, now we sort of have to just take a moment and plan ahead. We've had a lot of successes in the last term and we really need to think because these four years that start now will actually be quite eventful. It's not going to be as eventful as the late 1960s, but we're getting somewhere. And if we just look at our existing programs, we can immediately see I need to close the X-15. We've achieved the goals here and there's nothing more that uh, we can do. We can, of course, send people up in the X-15 and get a tiny bit of prestige, if uh, of the obviously, if that is a success. But it's not really worth our resources at this at this point in time. So we've just got now the Pioneer 4, which is not ready to go, and the biosatellite, which does not even have a rocket capable of carrying it yet. If we look at our rockets, we can see the Jupiter C uh, is still here, but its payload is only 11 kilograms, which will not be able to do anything else. So we close it. This is also something that I used to neglect uh, earlier when I was playing this game. I would leave the rocket programs open and if we just look here at the bottom again, you see our income now is 6,500 per turn, our surplus, and if I close this, it's now 6,600. So it helps a little bit and we know we're not going to need that booster anymore. So the uh, Juno 2 is at 84%, almost 85%. So what we can actually do is use these people to start working on something else. It is a risk, yes. It's not as high as it can be. But because the uh, actual probe is the one doing the catch-up here, I think we can use this time more effectively. Uh, we just need to see, I don't think you can see it from this screen, the uh, biosatellite, what is its mass? Oh, you can, yes. It's uh, 542 kilograms. I don't think that will be achievable immediately. The Thor Able booster can put 600 kilos uh, into a suborbital trajectory, but that's not what we're looking for. Uh, the redstone is only suborbital, so the Atlas booster is our next target, really. We can start with the redstone booster if we want to do some tests with Mercury early on, but because we have not even started Mercury, I don't think it's really uh, worth it. Thor Able, I just want to see if there's going to be any use for the Thor Able booster. The translunar is 55 kilograms, so let's just go back to the to the moon and see what weighs 55 kilograms. The lunar impactor maybe? 300, so that's out of the question. The orbiter is 38 kilograms, so we can do that, but it does not really follow historical progression. I'm not sure about this phase of the real NASA uh, program, but I would assume the impactor happens before the orbiter, because at that point when you send the impactor, you don't know how to enter orbit around the moon yet. So I don't know. We can try the, the, the orbiter maybe. So let's, yeah, let's not open it yet. We don't, uh, it's too many things open at once. So let's start with the Thor Able booster. It is uh, something that I usually skip over, but I want to see what the actual use of this booster is. So I just open it and I go back. I know this is the long way around. I could just have said yes to take me to this screen, but I found sometimes there's a bug where the game just freezes if I do that. So I go the long way around. It starts with a 56% uh, reliability, which is just above what the Juno 2 started uh, with. So let's take everyone there and just put them on this. I know I'm not optimizing their skills and things like that, but we don't have human rated rockets and so on yet. So let's just keep them busy for now. 
Very importantly, and something I neglected to do last time, was to start the upgrade of the mission control center because we are going to need a lot more mission controllers. Astronauts, we have Dennis Larson. Uh, I might actually give him some more training because it will be a while before we get the Mercury project up and running. So let's put him through another fitness uh, regimen. And uh, once Mary is done, we will look at her again so that's it nothing more that can be done we still need to work on the pioneer 4 before we can launch it even though the rocket is ready to go the biosatellite we're just getting it ready we don't have a booster yet and the thor able is also getting somewhere this is also something i found very interesting is the shape of this booster how it gets wider again uh, obviously the fairing at the end there but uh, if we just look at the description it says the thor able booster is a two-stage missile capable of placing 120 kilograms payload into low earth orbit or lighter payloads to a translunar trajectory when equipped with small solid fuel upper stages so we're still using those small uh, solid fuel upper stages like we did in Explorer. Moderately, uh, moderately reliable, the Thor Able is an affordable and versatile launcher. So we're at least moving a little up from last time, the Juno 2, which was low reliability, but uh, that's just what they write here. It doesn't mean it has to be that. We just invest our people to improve it. Mary is done with her rest season, which is only fair after putting your life on the line. You should get three months to just enjoy life. Then uh, the said personnel graduated, space complex has started and it's ended. So mission control only takes one season to upgrade. So we can immediately begin hiring more people. Jim Power here is immediately because he's got 58, 58, 49, 58, 52. He's going to be our other flight director. So he's in, no question. And he's got a 92 learning capacity. Uh, the other crop, uh, this one, Elias Buford. He's got to be in. He's good with trajectory and crew and payloads. And let's just look at the others. Here's a 97, David Law. He's good with trajectory and mission ops. And mission ops will also be something that we will need very soon. So that's three more people. That will give us eight in total. And I think we should aim for around ten. Because the early Mercury missions I think require nine if I'm not mistaken. But eventually we need eleven at least. And some of the later Apollo ones need thirteen. So uh, let's just see if there is somebody else we can use. Alexander here is too low, we can't use him. Ella, Ella is, we can use, she's got some trajectory and spacecraft systems and we will need more spacecraft systems uh, personnel. And I think that's it. It's, I don't know, I'm tempted to take somebody more. Alberto here, he's good with propulsion, but we don't need another propulsion person, so we'll just put him through, let's say, crew and payloads or something. So that, that's a good crop of people, I think. So money is not a problem at the moment. We just give them all a pay rise so they all feel happy and uh, good to be working here. And we can maybe start another training session for someone. I'm very tempted to actually improve Anel's skills here because when we come to the next one, the uh, Lunar Flyby, she will... She's already improved her skills, but if we can give her some training now, it's only going to pay off. So let's improve her propulsion a little. We can always stop her training if we need her early. Jackson has a 90% propulsion skill. I'm not going to invest more money into that. Luke Hatch has a 91% spacecraft systems. Nakita has 92. Shante has a 91. So these people are all ready to go. So I'm just going to leave them. They can hang around the space center. Obviously, if we don't use them repeatedly, they will uh, lose some morale. But then we can throw some money at them and make them happy again. So we have three people in the set center who are not assigned. And those are the ones that we put through more advanced training. So I can decide now if I want to actually put them through more training no you know what i'm thinking let's get started with our manned mission uh, programs it's 1959 we need to get moving so i'm actually going to open project mercury 
this is very important for us and it's not super expensive so let's get started on that immediately and I go back to my favorite screen which is this one so I can compare and actually you can see the skills are not very high so our first thing to do now is to decide what is our priority our first priority must be finishing Pioneer 4 so we need the best people in that because once it's out of the way we can just move on the biosatellite is not as important we don't have anything to launch it with so let's rather take these people and then pick the best ones you see it does make a difference uh, we've got some 40s and 50s now a lot of 30s as well but uh, maybe let me just see human rated rockets we've got a few human rated rocket specialists as well so actually let's do that first uh, open rocket program and I'm not going to use the redstone to me it does not make sense it starts off with a 75% reliability whereas the uh, Atlas booster starts at 60% but this one the redstone can only do suborbital missions so we anyway have to do the Atlas booster so let's just start with it and get some more time to put uh, people uh, working on it so now we can see we put our best human rated rocket specialists on that and that determines then the rest of what we can do that leaves us only three people so mercury is not going to progress super fast but almost 10 percent per turn is not bad it's certainly better than nothing which is what we would have had if we didn't do that Mary Hawkins, some fitness training, only single course, but I need everyone to at least be able to withstand the rigors of space travel. And we will now always have these four mission controllers unassigned when they're not on a mission because I don't want to train them anymore. You can also see this is very nice how the map changes uh, as things happen. We see our little launch pad there in the background. It's all lit up now. So uh, that's a nice touch. So let's move on almost ready I think I'm going to wait one more season for pioneer 4 it's at 80 now so it will or just under 80 but uh, for the next one it will probably reach about 82 or 83 percent which I think is moderately decent so th it's worth taking that risk I think the Russians haven't done anything yet so but I better not be speaking too soon Thor Abel doesn't matter too much. Uh, Mercury is good, it's progressing, and of course the Atlas. The Atlas and the Atlas family is going to be very important for us. Later on the Titan and the Titan family will be very important as well. And you'll see also there's some similarities between the US and the Russian programs because the Russians reuse the R7 booster a lot. They modify it, of course, and put some upper stages on and things like that. But uh, for us, the uh, analogy would be the Atlas and the Titan, because the Atlas was also modified a lot, and uh, of course the Titan, for example, the Titan 3C and so on, so it makes a lot of sense investing time and money into these. The Atlas rocket is a unique stage and a half missile, originally designed as an ICBM, like all the others at this stage. To prevent a possible ignition failure of the second stage, all three engines are ignited at liftoff. Once enough fuel has been burned to make the rest of the ascent possible with the central engine only, the lateral engines are discarded in order to save mass, which is very interesting as far as I know this is the only rocket ever to use that kind of design. The Space Launch, space launch Vehicle variant is known as the Atlas DLV-38 and has capacity to launch the manned Mercury spacecraft into low Earth orbit, which is exactly what we want. Mercury here, there's a lot of text, I'm not going through it all. They just speak about uh, un uncrewed missions to validate the performance. It's approximately 2 meters long with a radius of 0.95 meters. So it is actually very small and they actually had a height restriction astronauts above a certain height couldn't enter into the uh, mercury because it would not really uh, be practical uh, let's see it has an escape vehicle uh, astronaut uh, accesses the interior of the spacecraft by using a hatch due to its small volume the maximum autonomy is three days that is important which means this is a very short uh, 
time span vehicle. We're not going to use it for longer term missions, so it's just getting a little bit of uh, experience in manned missions. Our astronauts are ready, they've done their fitness training, that we got them the best specialists and trainers that money could buy, and they are doing very well now. Flight controllers, of course, and we have opened Mercury, so that's good. 1959 is drawing to a close, and at this point we can just look at the astronauts again. And we see here some of these people do need more skills. I'm going to put these uh, people, no, not through a continuous training. This is Evan Mann. Uh, he just needs some fitness training. So we have Joseph Hill, 61% fitness. Mm, I think he can go for another round. Lawrence Hunt is ready, 79% fitness. So I'm not going to spend more time. Uh, on that but he can certainly stand for some piloting training as can Linda Purvis as well Mary is still busy and we have Stephen Lewis here with a 70 uh, almost 70 percent fitness so I'll rather spend that on piloting again nothing we can do but we can maybe look at launching the pioneer it will be 83.2% reliability, which I think is a fair level. We might just have to pull uh, the flight controller, the mission controller here, out of uh, training, Anel, because she's still busy for two more seasons. So let's rather remove her from that training. It is unfortunate, but she still gets a bit of uh, an increase because we need her. So let's do it. Let's commit ourselves to a, a flyby, which uh, will really set the bar high for the Russians, because this is pushing the very frontiers of science. Yes, we know the Pioneer is not quite ready, but it will be by the next turn, and we just auto-assign. So now we're using all of our original five uh, flight controllers here. So now you can see why it's so important to be working on getting more people. This now also costs us a lot more than the X-15, but that's okay. And now we are done. So we move on to the end of 59, and hopefully we can make history with the Pioneer 4. A lot of uh, prestige for us if we succeed. So, eight steps in the mission. Let's hope for the best. at least a launch the upper stage has separated successfully probe deployment translunar injection that's a, again a solid booster it seems and it releases the Pioneer 4 and it mm, almost made it. Rather, you see, the problem now is intervening in uh, these steps is costing us more and more money each time. So now it's five and a half, just over five and a half thousand dollars. But I feel we have to because we need to move on. If we spend more time working on the Pioneer, it's going to set us back. So let's do that. And it works, thank goodness. So it's on its way and it flies past the moon without any further problems. And perfect, our third successful mission, well, if you count all of the X-15s as one. So, so far we have not tasted failure and I aim to keep it that way, but uh, it will happen at some point. So we've done the lunar probe, Pioneer, the flyby, and we have started mapping the surface of the moon. Obviously, we would have a camera on that uh, probe there. So this allows us to, let's see, 
mapping the surface using specialized cameras. All the data gathered by the mapping process will later be used to determine the best places where the lunar impactor, lunar lander and lunar sample return missions should be targeted at. Of course, we don't do sample returns. That's the Soviets. But uh, this is for the manned landing, of course. So we've done that. Brilliant. We end another year, well, almost end another year on a high note. Goals achieved, astronauts graduated, bad news, oh dear. Employee Sergio Shea, she, Shea I don't know how to say that, uh, is ill and will be unavailable for one season. So that's unfortunate. But this so set is one of our scientists. That's okay, it's not super, super disastrous. And we have done the Pioneer 4. It's obviously Shay now that I'm thinking about it, but anyway. The uh, achievement of goals during the past season have enabled the opening of the Venus, Mars and short duration lunar expedition uh, programs. So another milestone for us. And you can see them lighting up here. It's too early to think about Mars or Venus. Uh, that happens more towards the middle of the 1960s, so I don't think it's worth exploring at the moment. We can close the Pioneer 4 because it only has one mission configuration and we've done it already. The options for us now, we've stopped working on the biosatellite until we have more uh, scientists available and we have four now. So we just need to see what will be the best for us. As soon as we get the Atlas up and running, we can use that also to launch the biosatellite. So that will be a good thing. I just want to see who's better at um, human-rated rockets. And there's a 60 with space probes, space probes. Generally good with a lot of things and another space probe. So I'm rather going to use these people to work on more space probes. If we look at the Earth orbiting, we're busy with a biosatellite. Then we have the orbiting frog Otolith, which is, I think, even lighter. It only weighs 133 kilograms. So it will be worth it for us to start working on that. I know we haven't finished even the biosatellite, but it's okay. We're not far from uh, completing it. So let's just get working on the Otolith here. And there we go. So we've got a lot of uh, things uh, stirring at the moment. We just need to start working on our flight controllers here. So we've got uh, Alberto here. He's someone we can assign to a lot of things. I just want to see if there's a, an obvious one like David Law with the trajectory and GNC. Single training for him. Uh, let's just see, what's our other... Flight Director Jim Power. So I'm just starting with his weakest skill. Now we're just doing what we've done before with this new crop of people, but we have to start focusing on specific skills. And unfortunately, there's no way to know these things before we start the actual mission. So only experience will tell you what you need. And I think we need at least two people on trajectory and GNC and maybe two or three on spacecraft systems so i'm putting ella on spacecraft systems and it's not wasted because later on we'll need more people so if we have too many now it's fine crew and payloads and let's just see if we've got anybody else who's available alberto yes um spacecraft systems is never a wasted skill and was there anybody else? I think there was. 90, 90, 90, so that's fine. Another 90, and our flight director. So I might actually invest in her even more. Let's say mission operations. That's something where she's a bit weak. So let's rather do that and not waste any opportunity. Dennis Larson has finished his... Uh, training there his fitness so i think we can start on some more piloting for him we just want to get the, our people to the highest level possible he's already good but i think it will pay off in the end so we can end this season and just look at the progress that we've made atlas is looking good 
the frog otolith is not there yet, mercury and so on. So there already I'm starting to think, is it worth pursuing the uh, Thor Abel further? It might be. The astronauts who graduated and we have opened another project, of course. And we're at the end of our first year, so we only have a year left before this uh, video ends. And time really does fly. We've already started a new decade now, and the 1960s is when the real action happens. Uh, unless, of course, you're delayed and you actually launch your moon mission in the 70s, which is unfortunate, but it can happen. So, let me think. We've got another astronaut available, and that's Mary. She's actually very good. She's an all-rounder, so I might... It's still worth it. We don't have need of her yet, so let's just put her back in some piloting training and just review what's happening here. Let's finish the otolith before we start on the biosatellite again. The Thor Abel is progressing so slowly at only 2% a turn that I'm wondering if we should continue pursuing it. Of course, the Normal Atlas can't reach the moon. We'll need another variant, the Atlas Agena, for that. But still, is it worth it? Let's continue, I think. Let's, uh, let's just finish the Thor Abel. We can use it for the Lunar Orbiter program, at least the first phase of it. So we just carry on. The Soviets are remarkably quiet, so I wonder what that means. They might have had some failures. Or it could be because they took on so many projects early on, they really uh, hurt themselves there. And the Soviets have opened the Voskhod program, which is very interesting because that's, of course, the two-manned uh, capsule. They started with the, the Vostok in the very first turn already, but I don't know how far they've progressed with it. That's one thing that's maybe lacking in this game. In the Race to Space, the original game, you could actually go to like the, the Pentagon or whatever and look at the CIA's report, which is an estimation of how far along the Soviets are with their different projects. So I don't know if the Vostok is ready to go yet, but I'm not going to anyway. I don't have enough money as far as I know to open Germany, and I don't have enough people to work on it, so I'm not going to do what they're doing and wasting uh, resources. So we have more astronauts available, and this time I'm not going to spend more time on fitness. Evan Mann definitely needs some piloting training. Joseph Hill, Lawrence Hunt and Linda Purvis as well. So we just get the basics up first. Then we only have Stephen Lewis uh, left and I can put him through some more piloting training as well. Usually it happens for me in that order. It's first leadership, then fitness and then piloting, then EVA and science depending on what I want to use people for. In the last game that I played on my own actually what I did was Maybe something I could have done this time, but it's too late now. Uh, that was I used one person only for leadership. And that's because later when we have manned missions, we need somebody in Capcom. And that person only needs leadership. So I made him the best of the best of the best in leadership. And unfortunately, he never got to go to space. But that's the drawback, I guess. Nothing more we can do. So Thor Abel is slowly crawling along. Mercury is doing well actually. Atlas is doing well. We can actually start using it now. And the Otolith is also ready to go. Astronauts graduated again and flight controllers. So now now things become difficult. We can now decide if we want to send the second batch of flight controllers through some more training or whether we want to start using them. I think we can get away with training them more because the Otolith, if I'm not mistaken, uh, takes five people. So yes, so the original group is fine for that. Either a regular or an extended mission. I'm tempted to go for the extended because the biosatellite is not ready yet, but it should be ready in one or two turns. So let's rather do the regular. We can always do the extended later. 
and this will also be our first test of the Atlas booster, which is a very important milestone for the USA. So, that's it. Mr. or Dr. Von Braun, what do you say? I believe it's safe to launch this mission. I will hold you to that. Good. We see we've got some really good skills going now. This is only 1960 and we've got people in the 90s. And even our flight director is approaching 70%. So it's done. We've committed. If you ever want to go and see the missions that are either in progress or that you just started, you can just go down here to the vehicle assembly building and monitor it here. You can also scrub it if you want, but it's rare that you'll want to do that. Missions in progress, none, of course. So we don't really have to worry too much about our prestige. We're getting there very very quickly actually so it's still something to keep in mind though we have another astronaut that's of course Dennis Larson uh, he can go through some EVA training maybe yes I think so why not put him through some EVA he can walk on the moon one day if he's still alive by that time and stop stop right there the reason I committed uh, to the Otolith was so that we could still train our mission controllers, and now I'm not doing that. Spacecraft systems, trajectory and GNC, crew and payloads, spacecraft systems, one more, and our flight director, so I can focus on mission ops. He's weak in that. Good, there. See, that's why if we waste time, we're really going to set ourselves back. And that's avoidable, so let's not do that. I think the Atlas is doing very well. It's 86, and the Atlas is also, well, 87, so it sh should go well. Six steps involved. Unfortunately, the frogs in the Atlas don't come back to Earth, so... Uh, that is less than uh, ideal, but there it is. We do need the Atlas to work. It's so important for us. And the experiments have a problem. That's the Otolith, of course. I think investing a $4,000 payment is, is worth it. We've got 18, but I'm not spending 10 of that. 85% is decent. And it works. Good. If you ever have a manned mission go wrong, it's better it happens on the launch pad so the guys don't get killed. But of course this is not manned. Another problem. That's what happens when you launch your first missions with a new booster. I This is also why I didn't want to pay the whole amount at the beginning because... If you have to pay again, your money can run out very quickly. And there we go. It's exploding. Ah, well. There we go. Massive fireworks display. And I feel sorry for the frogs involved. It's not catastrophic for us. The prestige penalty is not great. The biggest problem was the... Atlas, of course. A major engine failure causes an explosion. Both the rocket and payload are lost. And the Otolith only goes down uh, less than a percent, but the Atlas goes down 7% in reliability. So everyone has to go back to the drawing board, unfortunately. And Mary Hawkins and so on. I actually didn't look at the uh, news there, unfortunately. The I think there was a random event. I'll have to look back at the footage now. I was so upset about the failure. Anyway, time to move on. Mary Hawkins is doing well. We can give her also some EVA training, so she can be another one of our EVA specialists. Now, let's just look at the rockets. Well, actually, the Atlas is still going to be 83 and just over 83% uh, reliable in the next turn, so we might as well commit to another mission. 
I think let's do it. The sooner we get it out of the way, the better, and I still feel okay about the odds. Our flight controller has a 70% skill average now, which is fantastic. So even in a failed mission, uh, they still get skills. And we end 1960, and that was a very quick year for some reason. Alright, let's do it again. Just having some water here in the background. And we're off the pad again. Alright, at least the launch is a success now. Ascent is good, the separation of those engines, deployment, and the Otolith is in orbit, at least. So the, the booster is now out of the picture. And it's a success. No more frogs need to be sacrificed for our space program, which is a good thing, of course. And we may more than make up our prestige loss, losses there. Uh, the Otolith is done. The amphibians don't need to die anymore. And of course the point of the Otolith was to test the effects of space on the ear, I think, the inner ear, because of the pressure uh, aspect of it. So we've done it, and our astronauts have graduated again, so... Things are happening now at a much quicker pace, at least. So, more piloting for you. More piloting for you. I'm not going to send Joseph Hill to uh, EVA training. He can just focus on being a pilot, as can Lawrence Hunt here. Linda Purvis is very good in piloting already, so she can go for EVA as well. Let's have three people dedicated to that. Lewis can go for another fitness course, and there we go. So, flight controllers are still busy, uh, except those that we already uh, have now from the last mission. So, let's manage. Uh, Otolith closed. Not going to do the three mission one. It's going to take too long now. Everybody needs to work on the biosatellite I think if we can just get these things out of the way before starting the mercury missions that will really help and uh, of course it will give us some more assurance that space is actually safe for human beings or relatively safe anyway and uh, that's of course good for us the Thor Able, they can finish that a little bit more and then we can open the Lunar Orbiter program and actually put that to use so it's not uh, wasted for, for nothing. Is there anything we can do now? I'm remembering what I said about the game punishing you if you do it uh, anything under 80%. We can take the risk of using the Mercury space flight, uh, spacecraft in a, in a suborbital flight to just test it, give it a good shakedown. Unmanned, of course, but the problem is it's... I don't think actually we've got enough flight controllers before I continue. Let me just have a look. Even for the unmanned one, I think we need a couple. Nine. So we need 9 for uh, the unmanned ones and 10 for the manned ones. So I'm actually glad I hired 10 flight controllers. That's really going to be very important. So nothing to do now. Just move on. Biosat has started catching up. The Thor Abel uh, is decent. Mercury is decent. And of course the Atlas, which we can now stop working on. It's over 90%. So... I think it's ready. There we go. The Soviets have finally caught up. They've done a lunar flyby, so they are not far behind us. But still, it, it does make a difference that we did it a couple of seasons before them. I actually wonder, in, in the original Race to Space, if you achieve something first, you get more prestige for it. But I don't know if that's the same in this game. 
that would be interesting to to find out actually because so far then we will be getting a lot more prestige uh, if that's the case astronauts graduated flight controllers and now i must pay attention to these pieces of news here due to recent successes the members of mission control have increased their morale by 17 percent so they are ecstatic they are just so happy even though we've had one failure it wasn't a manned mission so they're all at a hundred percent they are just so dedicated to to this program it's unbelievable i think I'm not going to put more people through training now. We need to start working on the Mercury unmanned test flights. It's still risky, but the sooner we do it and get a successful mission, the better. You see, this is now obviously a suborbital flight. So we're just sending it up and it's coming back down, but we'll still be testing the re-entry engines and everything. So, Doctor, what do you say? I believe it's safe, okay? Our goal will just be to get a performance test of the Mercury spacecraft and that's it. So let's just schedule the mission. The craft itself is not at 80% yet, but it will be by the end of this turn. Auto assign, let's just have a look now. You see the problems start to show up. Booster is fine, Retro is fine, Fido is where the other uh, is this the trajectory skill is coming in but we don't have a third person there if I just take that out you'll see we only have two people and Jim power is better with that but we want him as our all-rounder for the for the future because we'll need two flight controllers at a later stage so what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to put the other guy into that slot he doesn't have a much lower skill, so I think it's still okay because I want to train Jim Power for uh, the future. We also see Nakita here. She now has to fill in this role because of her mission operation skill, but there actually Jim Power is much better, so let me rather put him in there. We do want this mission to succeed. And then we have two spacecraft systems, so that's okay. At least we have two of those. Three, actually. There's another one here. So they're okay. We just need to get someone with the mission op skill and another person with a uh, trajectory skill. So this is important to keep in mind. And I've now actually clicked OK. Uh, that's fine. I'm just thinking, uh, are any astronauts involved here in, in uh, Capcom? But obviously not. It's unmanned. So we can just send uh, Dennis Larson for a little last bit of training in piloting. <coughs> and uh, then he should be ready to go. Our last person is now not Jim Power in the Mission Ops building, but that's okay. We can still see it's uh, Nakita and... I'm, I'm wondering now, she's very good with crew and payloads and we will need her in that role later on. So I'm not going to hire somebody uh, or, or use uh, to for mission control. I might need to hire somebody else. We will anyway need uh, more people in the future, so it's fine. Let me just see. <coughs> Probably it's going to be Paul Ennis here. We actually want to focus on mission operations for the skill, so he's fine. We'll anyway need to train him some more, so it's not a problem. Just a bit of a pay boost there. There we go, just so we future-proof ourselves a little bit. Okay, let's go. This is the main, main mission of 1961 for us. We really need this to work out. 11 steps, so obviously as we go, the missions will become longer and more complicated, which will also increase the risk of failure. But there we go. The first Mercury Atlas uh, configuration. Ignition. Here we go. And a lot of things flashing. Come on, come on. 
Okay, well, we've got some money, so let's pay 83% is not too bad. Just give it a bit of a better chance. And it works. Phew. Okay, at least it's made it up into sub-orbit. Okay, it's turning around. Time for the en engine test. Another problem, and now our odds are even lower because there are different people involved in every step. So I need to pay more now. If I pay the full amount, it's going to get to 81%, but that will take our money. So I think we need to. We need to give ourselves the best chance possible. So I threw that money away, but... I didn't have a choice. At least it's a small pr uh, price to pay, but 10% uh, penalty to the Mercury spacecraft is very bad. Very bad. Because now the Russians will start with the Vostok. I'm sure of it. Uh, well, that's the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. Astronauts graduated, flight controllers launched and failed. We get an F there, so the president will be calling me tonight. Set employees are available because the Atlas booster is finished. They can't do any more work on it. It's reached its maximum uh, reliability that we can give it. Which is good because I forgot to take the people off of there the last time. I'm going to stop working on the Thor Able it's not worth putting more people on that. Let's start with the lunar orbiter. You can see that this uh, indicator is green here because we actually have a booster worthy of taking it up there. So let's open the lunar orbiter program. And uh, if we can get into orbit before we do an impactor, that would be fine. There's no penalty, I think. Let's just see. There's no penalty. So that's fine. We just obviously need to start working on the probe here so uh, we're mixing and matching our people but that's okay six percent is not too bad we can put some better people on the mercury craft because we will actually need it so maybe that's our priority it's a bit of a long way of doing it to take everybody off of these missions now and then starting over but it just seems worth it to me to to maximize that chance and we end up with the same people so it's fine there we go so that will now be seven percent so it's a bit better at least the controllers I don't think we'll be launching a mission now or the next turn let me just check again we might actually do the biosatellite because the atlas is fine. We have no problem with it. The biosat can go. Let's do that. Let's get it out of the way. I just want to see how many flight controllers we'll need for the biosat. Five. So the others we can now still train some more. As we saw last time, there's a need still. And now all I have to do is uh, wait for Paul Ennis, the new guy, to start his basic training, which is fine. And I must just remember now the different roles that we had. Luckily it highlights in blue what the last thing that they did. So that will still help us. Mission Ops. Actually it's fine for him to get Mission Ops training. Because we'll need all of his skills. Jump power. And then we have Nakita. Which I think we'll leave her. Because we need her for crew and payloads. That we know for sure. So this will help. Astronauts. And it's Mary Hawkins. She's decent, but I can give her some more fitness training. She's not at 80% there yet. That's the thing also that, that can become a bit frustrating. You invest so much time and training and money into your people, and then you have a mission and they die. And it happens, but obviously it's a, an unfortunate thing. We still have two people not assigned for uh, scientists, so we can actually work on something new. The question is what? 
we don't okay we've done the otolith it's finished and you can see here in the bottom we've met all of its goals so that's how we can tell very quickly if we've done it already and even the atlas booster can't li lift the pegasus satellite so that has to wait for the titan or something like that we've done all space planes we can start now we're definitely not going to afford the Germany, we need 14,000, so our affordability status is not uh, ideal for that. Luna, maybe? We can start working on the Ranger Impactor, I think. Unless we rather want to put people on another booster that can reach the moon with a bigger capacity. I think that will actually be more worthwhile. We can still use the Thor Able for that orbiter, but the Atlas Agena is important for us. It starts at 75% reliability, so really we only need to work on the Agena booster section. So this will be very uh, impactful for us because it has an interplanetary capability, which will allow us to do some of the basic things uh, in that regard. Okay, so 62 and 56 percent, that's not bad. And we can now assign the Biosat. Yes, that's the thing. We also have an extended mission option for this one, but we need to start working on getting Mercury up. So one se uh, season is fine. And the Atlas again, more experience for the Atlas. And we're too broke. Our affordability status is lacking, so let's just go on to the next season. Everything is looking decent except for Mercury because we were set back there so much. All right. One turn away from the end of this video. Astronauts flight controllers program good news increased public interest in the space program has given you a boost of 518 prestige points which is always welcome it's not a huge amount but i'm very happy because it will still work towards our goal we need 9300 we have 8300 so we are very close without even doing any more missions now let's do the biosat we should have enough money for that now single duration and assemble auto everyone is good even uh, anel here she's got 71.3 percent so it's very good the others are the ones the four of course with the other skills in the 90 so i'm not going to worry we just need to get the astronauts ready Evan Mann here, his fitness is still lacking. It's not even 70 yet. Joseph Hill, he, he's 70, uh, 74 for fitness, which is not bad. So we can rather start uh, the second round of EVA training. Uh, for Lawrence Hunt, we can actually just also do EVA. We might as well. That will free up a lot of options for us because then we can have confidence that most of our people can do an EVA successfully. And Stephen Lewis with a very bad EVA score, so he needs that training. Last turn, and let's just proceed to the mission. Okay, looking good. Go. Looking good. Ascent is a success. Deployment may be a problem. Yep. 86% uh, Lowest level success, not going to spend money on that. It should work on its own. Good. Almost had to eat my words there. And like somebody once told me, keep your words sweet in case you have to eat them. 
82% again, we anyway don't have the money, so let's just move on. I wish it didn't give you the option of spending money if you didn't even have the money. All right, deorbit burn, they've done the experiments. This is the first time we bring something back from orbit. And another possible problem, I still don't have the money. 82% is not bad. Ah, oh, good grief. Of course it has to have a problem at the second last stage, but nothing I can do. What was the problem? Telemetry data shows shortly before the radio blackout that the pressure and temperature sensor sensors located inside the capsule are reporting off nominal values. The capsule is recovered but a hole is detected in the heat shield revealing that the whole interior is burned. Some experiments are lost. Now it says some experiments are lost then I would expect that the downgrade would not be so severe, but anyway, 6.4% downgrade. Back to the drawing board and the end of the video. But before we do that, let's see. Luna 3 has now flown past the moon. What did the Soviets do before? Now I'm a bit confused here because I thought they already did a lunar flyby. Was that a lunar impactor perhaps? I don't know. I'll have to look back. We can just look at the uh, information in our public affairs office because here they now get a lunar uh, flyby. Uh, Dennis Larson and we finished a failed mission. So let's just go and look quickly. So what did they do that time? Was there anything else? Space plane? No. I don't remember. The lunar probe. Here you see uh, the lunar flyby and the lunar probe. So how is that different exactly? It's the same. It's whatever is first. So that's fine. I don't know what happened before. But I could have sworn the Soviets already did a lunar flyby. So maybe they decided to do it again. Or it's something else. Anyway, it's time to end the video. It's 1962. We have only two years till the next uh, budget review period or is it now actually only one year have i gone over schedule here it looks like it 59 60 61 2 and 3 no not 3 just 2 so i have gone over schedule i apologize for that we've uh, gone a bit too far i was too eager but anyway that's all right I hope to see you in the next video we're still uh, we're having some successes and some failures we've moved beyond that early uh, phase of just having a success every time so now our space program is maturing and our soviet competition is also becoming more and more uh, interesting and more and more severe so a lot of action happening i'm sure in the next episode so join me then as we continue our race to the moon and may fortune find you and follow you i'm still working on how to end these uh, videos so bear with me there until next time, adieu.